Hi, this is Miss Worth, and today we're going to go over everything you need to know for your plant exam about the plant body. Now, the plant body can be divided into three organs, the roots, the shoots, and the leaves. And let's talk about the roots first. Now, the root's primary function is to anchor the plants in the soil and absorb the water and minerals from the soil that the plant needs to grow. In general, there are two kinds of roots, fibrous roots, which you see in figure one, which tend to have a lot of side branching, and tap roots, where you have one large vertical root. Tap roots are also found in weeds, like dandelions, and in plants that live in drier climates, where they have to go deeper to get the water they need to grow. Regardless of what kind of root a plant has, the roots are covered in root hairs, and the function of the root hairs is to increase the surface area available for the absorption of water and minerals. Much like the function of the villi lining your small intestine is to increase the surface area available for the absorption of nutrients from the food you eat. Now, the second plant organ is called the shoot, and the place where the leaves are attached to the shoot or the stem is called the node, and the distance between those nodes is called the internode. Uh, shoots also have areas of new growth called buds, and there are terminal or at apical buds, and those are found at the tips of the shoots, as you see on the top of the plant. And then there are also axillary buds, which are seen off to the side and control side branching. And here's a picture of some modified shoots. Uh, strawberry plants send out modified shoots called stolons, and those actually can root and become their own independent plants, basically clones of the mother plant. And contrary to what some people may believe, potatoes are not roots. Potatoes are actually modified shoots called tubers. Now let's go on and talk about the leaves, the third major plant organ. Okay? Now leaves are made of mesophyll tissue and veins. And those veins you see when you tear apart a leaf, those are actually vascular bundles, which we'll talk about later. Now the primary function of the leaf, of course, is to do photosynthesis, to produce energy and carbohydrates for the plants a gas exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide, and transpiration, the loss of water through the stomata of the leaves of the plants. And there are a number of modified leaves as well. You see tendrils in pea plants and blackberry vines, and spines in plants such as cacti. Okay? And this next slide just shows some interesting pictures of close-ups of different leaves, where you can see the guard cells and the stomata in between the two guard cells, which is kind of cool. Okay? Now, the roots and shoots are interdependent systems. Both of them depend on each other. The roots need the sugars made by the leaves that are carried to them by the shoots, and the shoots need the water and minerals that are brought by the roots. Now, let's move on to plant tissues. And just like there's three plant organs, there are also three plant tissues. First one is dermal, which sounds like epidermis. It's basically the skin of the plant. And its primary function is to prevent the dehydration of the plant. Then you have ground tissue, which makes up the bulk of the plant body. And this is where photosynthesis occurs, where you will find mesophyll cells, and where storage of the carbohydrates will occur. And then finally, you have vascular tissue, which is like the plumbing of the plant. Uh, this is where you have the xylem, which transports the water and nutrients from the soil up to the plant, and the phloem, whose job is to transport the sugars. Now, we've talked about the three plant organs, the three plant tissues. Now we're going to talk about, you guessed it, the three plant cell types. And the first plant cell type is called parenchyma. Now these are the typical all-purpose plant cells. They're not specialized, and this is where photosynthesis occurs, and these make up the bulk of the plant cells. Then you have the calenchyma, which have thickened cell walls, but they're unevenly thick, and they make kind of stringy structures and provide support to the plant. And then finally, sclerenchyma which have very thick cell walls and help support the rigid xylem. Now let's talk about parenchyma. Uh, parenchyma cells are unspecialized, which means they can develop into a lot of different kinds of plant cells. In a way, they're sort of like the stem cells of the plant body. Okay? The calenchyma have thicker cell walls and, provide, and make those stringy structures that you see when you eat a piece of celery. You may, may have noticed before when you eat a piece of celery and break it apart, you'll see these little strings coming off, and those are made primarily of calenchyma cells. And then finally, sclerenchyma cells, which have thicker and more rigid cell walls than the other plant cells. Now, sclerenchyma cells are usually dead at maturity, like the xylem, and they support the xylem tissue. And sclerenchyma cells are the cells that give the gritty texture to the pears that you eat. Now let's focus on vascular tissue for a bit. 
Now there's two kinds of vascular tissue you need to know about. The first is xylem, and again the job of xylem is to move the water and minerals up from the soil to the rest of the plant. Xylem cells are actually dead at maturity. And that basically when the xylem cell grows, when it reaches full size, it kills itself and spits out everything except the cell wall, leaving the maximum amount of space available to transport that water to the plant. Kind of turns itself into a giant straw or piece of PVC pipe. Um, xylem cells are also referred to as tracheids or vessel elements. Now the other kind of vascular tissue is called phloem, and the job of phloem is to carry the sugars made by photosynthesis. And these are also known as sieve tubes. Now phloem is always accompanied by something called companion cells. Now companion cells have a higher percentage, a higher number of mitochondria than the other cells in the plant will. And what those mitochondria do is generate excess ATP that the companion cells donate to the phloem, and the phloem needs that ATP so it can move the sugar throughout the plant. Remember that the molecular weight of glucose, 180 grams per mole, is 10 times that of water. So in some ways you can consider the job of phloem moving sugars to be much more difficult than the job of xylem, which is primarily moving water. Now phloem cells are alive at maturity. Okay. But they spit out their nucleus, their ribosome, and their vacuole to make more room for sugars. They can push that sap through the plants. Uh, there are specialized structures at the end of the phloem cells called sieve plates that help facilitate the movement of this sugar between the cells. And again, remember, the companion cells are really important to the phloem because they give the phloem the extra ATP they need to move that sugar. Now, the arrangement of this vascular tissue in the stems of dicots and monocots are different. If you take a look at this slide, if you take a cross-section of a dicot stem, you'll see that the xylem and phloem, the vascular bundles, are arranged in a ring throughout the stem. While in monocots, the vascular bundles, the xylem and phloem, are much more scattered throughout the stem. And that's one of the ways you can tell the difference between a monocot and a dicot. Now let's go through a brief discussion of plant evolution. Okay. Now here's a brief overview, and this diagram is in your textbook. The first land plants were the mosses or bryophytes, and these had to rely on diffusion to get the nutrients and moisture they needed because they didn't have any vascular tissue, no plumbing, so to speak. And next came the ferns or pteridophytes. These were the first vascular plants. These were the first plants that had plumbing, and this was an important evolutionary step because it allowed the ferns to inhabit locales that were drier and weren't necessarily moist on the surface. Uh, then came, next in plant evolution, were the uh, conifers or gymnosperms. These were the first plants that had seeds and pollen. And this is an important advantage because if you have pollen, you don't need to have water to have your gametes to meet each other. The wind or something else can carry that pollen around. And today, kind of at the top of the evolutionary scale of plants, we have the flowering plants, or angiosperms. And these are the ones that co-evolved with their animal pollinators, which allow them to really assure that some kind of reproduction is going to occur because they have helpers to spread their gametes. Now, we think that the first plants probably evolved from algae. Now, what's the evidence for this? The, the chlorophyll found in modern plants is very similar in structure to that found in algae. The, uh, ribosomal RNA genes are extremely similar, and cell division occurs in much the same way in algae as it does in modern plant cells. Well then, how are modern plants different from algae? In two important ways. Modern plants have alternation of generations, the alternation between the gametophyte and the sporophyte generation that we talked about last week. Uh, modern plants also have apical meristems, which are areas of concentrated cell growth found on the tips of the roots and the shoots, and you don't see those in algae. Okay? So now that we've gone through uh, plant structures and plant evolution, let's try a few practice questions. Okay? Question number one. One important difference between the anatomy of roots and the anatomy of leaves is that A, only leaves have phloem and only roots have xylem. B, the leaves of roots have cell walls that are lacking in leaf cells. C, a waxy cuticle covers leaves but is absent in roots. D, vascular tissue is found in roots but is absent from leaves. Or E, leaves have epidermal tissue but roots do not. And the answer is C, 
A waxy cuticle covers the leaves but is absent in roots. The waxy cuticle prevents water loss, but if you had a waxy cuticle around the roots, it would prevent water absorption, which is exactly the opposite of what you want to have happen in the roots. Let's try another one. There are three basic tissue types in plants are A, xylem, phloem, and tracheids, B, dermal, vascular, and ground, C, parenchyma, sloranchyma, and cholenchyma, D, fibrous, xylem, and phloem, or E, dermal, fibrous, and vascular. And the correct answer is B, dermal, vascular, and ground. Answer C, parenchyma, sloranchyma, and cholenchyma. Those are the three plant cell types. Let's try one more. Phloem transports A, carbohydrates, B, ions, C, water, D, minerals, or E, protein. And the primary function of phloem is to transport, you got it, A, carbohydrates.